Today, I'll show you how to capture even the smartest, most cantankerous squirrels. There's tips and there's things that go wrong. Interested? Here we go. This guy's not happy and we're just gonna put a towel over the trap to kind of calm him down a little bit and then take him out and release him in his new home. Relocation, you have to look at the rules and see what the deal is. You may or may not be able to release these guys into the wild. You might have to call somebody like animal control. So look into that. I'm not encouraging you to do anything one way or the other. And we don't want to kill them. We just want to relocate them where they're not going to do us any damage. All right, let's take him out. You want to let him go? You want to do that? No, we're about we're five miles from a house. It's a nice country setting. He's going to enjoy it here. All right, well. How do you know him? Huh? Hey, buddy. Well, you just... Okay. Pull that. Pull this out like this. And then just pull that lever. No, this lever here. Ready? Ready? Here he goes. You don't get one shot at this. See? Boom, boom, boom. He's gone. That squirrel you saw that I just released, it's been a battle of wits for about two weeks. I didn't use this trap initially because we have the neighbors over there that they had a major squirrel problem. Squirrels got into their attic, ate up their insulation, I think did about $9,000 worth of damage. But they were using this trap all over on their end and catching probably a dozen squirrels. So the only squirrels that were left were squirrels that were smart enough to figure this trap out. And so therefore, I figured it wasn't gonna work. So I went on the internet and tried a couple options. So here's one I tried where I kind of made, put the peanut butter in the inside and then made this thing where the squirrel would have to reach in and would get caught. But he just knocked that out. He chewed this all up and chewed the back of it up. He got the peanut butter and totally defeated this trap. Based on what I was reading on the internet, having a big kind of container that the squirrel would fall into and then they wouldn't be able to jump out. You just leave a, a trail snack through here. And then originally I had this, what I call the diving board and that was stuck on there. The duct tape really kept it in place. And then I put the peanut butter on this end. The thinking would be the squirrel would come out here, eat the peanut butter and then fall inside. <laughs> But what happened was, the first day I sent this out, all the treats got eaten first. There were a couple treats here, and then ultimately the prize on the end was the peanut butter. The squirrel just ripped this thing off. I mean, this was really on there with this duct tape. It was, it was not going anywhere, but it was enough that if he jumped on there, he'd fall in the hole. And there were some treats down in there to, to entice him to jump in. And he just ripped that off and took it into the woods. I couldn't find it for days so after that didn't work I just decided to come up with some sort of rolling system and these are just prescription bottles I'd seen you know people use PVC or whatever or a metal rod but the thing was I wanted him to kind of have a real big challenge I put some treats on the end here and I put the peanut butter on the inside and I actually put it squeezed it in side of here and the little guy was able to open that up. And there wasn't even peanut butter inside, but he just opened it up. I think he just stood there. You can see some bite marks where he was eating at it. He stood here on the end and got all the peanut butter, defeated that trap. So I came back to the trap that hasn't failed me for 20 years. I've caught dozens and dozens and dozens of squirrels with this trap. But this guy, this squirrel that I was working with, was very smart. As I said before, he'd been defeating all those traps on the neighbor's yard right next door. So he knew how to manipulate this trap. There were a couple factors that I adjusted that made the difference between the failure over there and the success here. First thing I did is I always lock this back trap. I don't put both of them open. And that allows you to put the what I call the bait in the inside. So I originally had an old peanut butter container. There's a lot in there. 
I figured he could spend a lot of time in there, put the trap down, put this in place, everything was working. Just like that. And the little guy was successful at pulling the container out to about here. And that's where I found it. I cut down the lip on this right here and put it in so that there would be, it would be harder for him to do that. And that didn't work. So then I got rid of the peanut butter container and I just cut the bottom rim off. And I took a cable tie <laughs> and tied it down so he couldn't chew it off. And you can see he licked the thing clean. And I also put in an apple core there just as an extra treat. Figuring that he would have to spend a good bit of time here. Then I made sure that the mechanism was barely on there so that it was like a hair trigger on the trap and it would close. He defeated it. And all I can think of is he was running his tail back here to keep the door open just enough so that this latch wasn't going down and defeating the trap enough to get everything out. So I added a weight. This is just a magnetic clip, put it on there. And that itself was enough weight to help keep, you know, just to kind of force that one down a little bit. And then I just took a little rock and clipped it in here like that to put in some extra weight. And I put it at the very end. And then I made sure that the springs, there's two springs, there's a spring right here and there's a spring right here, that those were all adjusted and ready to go. So then I set up the trap just like this. Brought it up here like this, put the bait back in, lots of peanut butter and another apple core. And within, I would say an hour, boom, success. So the weight up front here is a major factor and making sure that you tie down the source and putting it back here past the trigger pad is a factor. You can get a trap like this at Home Depot for about 25 bucks. And if you think about trying to avoid $9,000 worth of damage, it's probably worth it. The squirrels were chewing up our composite railing and decking. They were taking our peaches when they were just about ready to pick, perfect condition. So we had to you know, kind of squirrel versus human and try to get those before the squirrels would attack. Just a lot of hassle. But we didn't want to kill them, so that's why we have this catch and release trap. I've seen comments online for places that sell this, Amazon, whatever, and they complain that the trap doesn't work. And if you don't do these little details, you put that magnet in, with a weight in there, and you, you put the bait cup in the back and cable tie it, works a hundred, and I'm not kidding, a hundred percent of the time. Ever since I did these two little minimal modifications, success every time. I don't see any squirrels around, but I'm ready to put this in place if we find another. Okay, a bit of an update here. This guy was knocking over the trap and then getting inside and getting the stuff. So I had to actually weight down the trap here with some wood. This happens to be decking. So he wouldn't turn it over. And yet again, victory. This is squirrel number two for today, the first second one in the last hour. He's a lot more tranquilo and he's eating everything that's in there. If I caught him, it's fair enough that he gets to eat everything. He's not squealing like the other squirrels. This is squirrel number three, and this poor guy doesn't have a tail. I saw him running around the yard the other day, and it looks like he lost it recently. So we'll take him out and put him in the wild with the rest of his buddies. By the way, peanuts, unsalted, really good for squirrels. Thumbs up and comments, always appreciated. Thanks for watching. If you like home repairs, design, building things, cosplay, check out my channel. I have all sorts of things there and all sorts of subjects and I like to post at least once a week, if not twice, if I have more time.